Um, the, I wanted to just start with one bit of good news, is that we can, as farmers, we can actually feed the world. Uh, not just now, but we will be able to feed it in the future. That is not the challenge. Uh, in the turn of the century, there were, there were double the calories produced um, c you know, compared to the uh, required need of the, of the population. So it's, just, it's not an issue. Production is not the issue. And anywhere you read the debate that production is the issue, it isn't. The issue is the world's got to decide it wants to be fed. And it hasn't done that yet. Um, but I <coughs> it's been fascinating listening to the two previous speakers because I actually do agree with them. It, this is not a mathematical issue. It's not about technology, although that will play its role. It's actually about commitment. Um, and I'll come back to that at the end. But I am going to start with a few numbers. Uh, and I thought I'd just start with a little bit of the quiz, because a lot of people don't know the basics of um, how the world sits at the moment. So does anyone in the room know how many hectares we have in terms of farmable hectares in the UK per 1,000 head of people? It just brings it up to a full number. No, of course you don't. You're not going to know that. So I'll tell you, it's 101. So does... would. Anyone has to guess whether that same number in China is more or less? Go on, somebody make a fool of themselves. Less. You'd say it was less. Yeah, I would have said it was less when I first looked at it, uh, genuinely. It's actually more or less the same. <coughs> now, if you look at the percentage of workforce, I think most people are aware that in Western Europe, um, and probably most extremely in the UK, there's a very, very low uh, number of people like me wearing green tweed jackets. It's on this particular set of stats, it's about 2.2%. That actually includes the service workers, the people that work directly with us. If you actually include the farmers, the guys that drive the tractors and milk the cows, it's about 1%. Anyone have a rough idea what it is in China? Okay. 72%. Now, this is the one I really like. Now, and I know you're not going to know the answer to this either. <laughs> but, how many tractors do you think we've got in the UK? I'll tell you, 500,000. Farmers love their tractors in the UK. If you go onto a farm and they've just bought a new tractor, you will not get off the farm until you've looked at it and appreciated <laughs> its awesome splendor. And having them in a long line like that is just an idea. That isn't actually um, John Deere's promotional picture. That actually is a line of tractors at a farm sale. But um, we love our tractors. How many do you think they had in China? This was at the turn of this last century. Well, they did have more than us, which is perhaps not surprising. They had 703,000. But their agriculture is not based on the tractor even today. It's moving towards our model because, um, as one of the previous speakers said, they're urbanizing. And in a sense, they say, well, you guys urbanize. Your model uses a lot of industrial um, you know, um, uh, equipment. Um, there's less people employed. Therefore, we've got to mechanize. Uh, although their landscape is much more challenging. But look back at those, look at those numbers and then look back at the size of us in relation to the number of tractors that sit on this country and look how many there are in China. It's a big difference. The point about that is, is that our um, food chain in this country was currently 60% self-sufficient and it's dropping. I think the la latest set of figures was 58%. Um, it's heavily dependent on that 1% pouring huge amounts of diesel into these things to keep it moving. So that 58% is in jeopardy in terms of the, uh, the current system. Actually, China was self-sufficient up until the turn of the century. And if they switched the oil off, they would still, there would be issues in the cities, and, they would, and they've got a growing and a rapidly growing challenge. Um, but they're actually, 80% of their production, they could feed themselves even now without, without much oil input. And there's lots of stats I could show you, but I, I think you know, it's food for thought. I'm going to touch over you know, the, the, the basics of this to try and build up some sort of argument which really supports uh, a lot of what's been said before. But the current debate, we all see the headlines. You know, we're, we're told there's a conflict, food or fuel, meat or malnutrition, water or war. There are major issues, and if we don't tackle those issues and don't decide what we actually want to end up with, we are going to see conflict over this. And probably the first one we're going to see conflict over will be water. Um, <coughs> and the headlines around this are interesting. We've, if we don't deal um, uh, with these issues, a third of the globe's already facing mal malnourishment. And this is the number I like to put out, because everyone's told we're going to go from 6.8 billion people to 9 billion people. It doesn't mean anything. I can't see that. It's too big a number. But last year, the global agriculture fed another 76 million people than it did the year before. 
This year, we're feeding another 76 million people. Next year, we're going to feed another 76 million people and another 76 million people every year until 2050. <clears throat> and that's another point, coming back to what I was saying about China. If China did follow the current model, we know they're fueling, to some extent, um, the world's economic growth. They were at 12%. They dropped to, I think, 6% in the credit crunch. They're moving back up to about 7% of growth. But if they were actually to attain the same model that America's used, they would need two-thirds of the world's harvest, and you can see how much oil they need in order to support that. So, you know, it's fool's gold. Uh, and this is, a, um, <laughs> this is another issue that... Um, Again, as an example, the food riots that, that, that uh, we heard about last year um, in places like India and, and Haiti, etc., are not an issue of not enough food. They're an issue of economics. Um, basically, the reason Haitians couldn't feed themselves on the day was they couldn't afford to buy the food. Um, the, uh, roughly at that time, to put it in English currency, the, the gr grain had been trading historically for the previous three or four years roughly at 75 pounds a ton on the global market. Um, and it went to 85, 95, and then over 100. And then it's the, it went to the hi highest it's ever been. And, the, and their economy couldn't dip into the market at that level. And there was a lot of debate around this of how bad are we, you know, we, you know, we need to, I mean, one of the big debates around it came, that came out, um, it was on Newsnight, um, we should eat less meat so poor people can live. And in reality, that's what, to some extent, is going to have to happen. But on, on this particular issue, in the way the economy is currently set up, that would not happen. Because on that, in that, at that time, it was costing our farmers £100 a tonne to produce it. So if their only market was £75 a tonne, they'll stop producing it because they'll go bankrupt within a year and a half. The bank managers pull the money. There are much more profound problems to the food chain than just supply and demand. <coughs> Touching, looking at the water, um, you've, you may have heard you know, there's 1.4 billion people that um, don't have access to clean drinking water, but it's not just in sub-Saharan Africa. If, you know, if you look there, it's 15, nearly 15% 15 of our population now are having problems. They're having to ship water into some of the urban areas. In, um, sorry, where am I? In Spain, actually move it physically in ships just to be able to flush the toilet and drink. They have run out of water. There are whole farms that are now, because they've been basically reliant on artesian water and the way they farm them, they can no longer, the soil won't support rain-fed agriculture. They, they've just shut down and they won't be productive for at least another 10 years and only then at a very low rate uh, because they've run out of the artesian water. 